while you're doing this, others will be sipping brandy as the bow of the boat just sinks further and further into the deep blue sea. That doesn't work. You have to make a positive change and decide who you are. Tonight, I'm going to prove to you that the individual does matter. These stories, all of them, when you put them together, it's overwhelming. No matter how small or seemingly insignificant, you making a difference in your life does make a difference. It's the sum of E4 when it's put together that works. Education. Something as simple as preserving history. It's being rewritten right now. Who is saving it? I was on the phone um, this afternoon because I was in a meeting preparing for the show this morning. And... Um, one of our assistants brought in a stack of, of stuff. It was amazing. It was, um, you guys know who Carl Sandburg is? He wrote the Lincoln books. His good friend um, was one of the biggest collectors. He was like David Barton in the 1800s. And he collected everything, all these pictures and everything else. A viewer of this program has that collection of George Washington, all of the, all of the, engravings and the pictures of George Washington from 1700s. He sent them to me today to preserve them. Um, it was overwhelming. I called him up and we talked for a while and he said, we've got to preserve our history. We have to do it. You have to see this. You'll find it at uh, glenbeck.com. Before I came over, I, I shot a little video in, of this collection, this guy. I mean, it's amazing. You can educate others. It sounds simple, and it is. But if it's not done, we lose it. If you've been sitting on the sidelines, you've been getting a nudge to do something, but you held back because you, see, you feel like it's stupid or you don't really know what to do and it doesn't seem like it'll make a difference, I want to show you the people who felt just like you do now but decided to get into the game. As an individual, it will seem small, maybe even silly, but as a group, you'll change the world. In fact, maybe you'll fundamentally transform it. When we come back, I'm gonna show you the living proof. People who've changed their own lives, who I believe will change the world. The things that they're doing, and some of them risking to do it. Next. Tonight, in this audience, we have uh, moms who decided they were just fed up with indoctrination in their children's schools and decided to start a free patriot uh, camp and remind kids of history, teach it for maybe the first time. We have an amazing retiree who has heard me talk about Spookidoo, George Soros, and now translates some of our shows into Chinese and sends them overseas where they're being picked up by the media over in, oh, <laughs> you must hate uh, and sorry, spooky dude. We also have a teenager who says he'd like to become the next George Washington. Uh, we have people here who have been inspired by E4, the 40 Day and 40 Night Challenge, 828. Uh, and we have a guy, Brian Sandberg. He came in from California. He has a story about taking part in a flash mob of kindness that uh, he heard about on this program. Brian, how are you? I'm great. Good. Tell me the story. Well, I gotta say that um, the flash mob of kindness was the most frustrating and the most rewarding day that I've ever had. Usually are. Um, um, I heard about the flash mob on your radio program about a uh -huh. month prior and said, this is something that I have to do. And um, kind of planned for it for an entire month. I mean, it wasn't all that complicated. You had just asked to um, get some groceries and go give them to somebody that needed it. Right. And um, that was what I was going to do. I had a couple people in mind, and I decided that I was going to um, put your book, The Seven, as part of the gift. And um, Had you read I, it? I had read it twice. Wow. And um, I went out to go buy a book, and there were absolutely no books available in any of the bookstores. Um, California. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, it was kind of a no-brainer. I said, well... It's going to be mean even more. I'm going to give them my book, dog ears and highlighted and everything, um, to the person. But um, it posed a problem. Now, now I was giving something that really meant something to me, 
to a person that I didn't know. So um, instead of just going out and giving it to the first person that I thought about, um, I actually had to do a little research into the people I was doing. And I, I had two people in mind that didn't work out. Um, the first person um, I looked at for like about five minutes and somebody came up and then they just started counting out cash. They, they had been panhandling all day and they're counting out $20 bills in front of the store. And the second person was um, two people that generally asked for money on the, on the medians. And I grabbed my groceries and went out right into the middle of the median and uh, said, here, I'd really like you to have this. And um, she turned to me and said, do you have any money? And I go, well, no, I don't have any money. I, I just wanted to, wanted to see if this could help you out. And she goes, well, um, we don't want your food. You know, if you, you know, you're disturbing the people that are coming by. Can you? <laughs> you're disturbing the and, people coming uh, by. And I, I was frustrated. I, I went back to my car. I loaded everything into my car, and I went home. I gave up. I, I absolutely gave up. And I was, um, I was at home, and um, just, it's like this was supposed to be easy. Um, and. Uh, then I thought to myself, maybe this isn't supposed to be easy. And I, I thought, and um, I remembered every day I drive to work, I see this guy coming from behind this um, bank, Wells Fargo, and he's always got his, he's got his camping gear on. It's like he's going to go on hiking. And it, it occurred to me, maybe, maybe this guy is sleeping behind the Wells Fargo. I, I didn't know. A uh, young guy, 30 something, and I said, I, it was 10 o'clock at night. I had given up for the day. It's 10 o'clock at night, and I said, I'm going to jump in my truck and I went in and sure enough there he was like sleeping in the corner in the snook of the Wells Fargo and I went out there and um, just sort of laid the bags down by his head and I, I didn't want to wake him up so I wrote a little note in in the book and um, what'd you write um, basically the um, events in people's lives change from day to day and this isn't much but hopefully it'll help a little bit and hopefully this will kind of jumpstart you into a better direction. And I just signed it, um, someone who cares, and left. And um, um, went home. And when I went to work the next morning, I, I was, um, um, I was getting ready to go to work and I didn't see him on the corner. I mean, he's there like clockwork at 6.45 and um, I said, well, I'm going to go check, check the parking lot. So I, I drove by the parking lot because he was visible from where I was going to drive by. And there he was sitting. He was having a little peanut butter and jelly sandwich from the bags that I put. And he was sitting up against the wall, and he was reading your book. <laughs> so um, it, it was pretty emotional. I, uh, it, How did it change you? <laughs> you know, it didn't just change me. I, I realized. Um, later that <laughs> you're probably one of the sneakiest people around. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Little old me? <laughs> you know, because the, the feeling that I got from that experience was something that I knew I was going to have to repeat. So, Heroin. Yeah, exactly. And I knew that 421 was going to turn into 521, and then that was going to turn into two weeks later, and maybe one week later after that, and then... And um, I, I was think I was like, Glenn's just created this little army of people that's now going to go out there and help people, without subtly telling anybody to do it. Um, I'm sure that that's what happened. I will tell you, and uh, we haven't even had a chance to tell this story on the uh, on the air yet. Um, there was a a girl that um, is in high school, and her she did the same thing, and she got addicted to it and her friend that she grew up with had fallen on the wayside and she was when they got into high school I think she's a junior in high school when they got into high school they fell apart and they weren't friends anymore because her friend went with all the bad kids and fell into drugs and everything else and she's been reaching out and reaching out and reaching out and one day after this random act of kindness day she um, she told her friend you wouldn't believe how good it felt. You wouldn't believe what happened to me. Her friend was charged by that, and they had the first real conversation they'd had in three years. They're now back to being best friends. Her friend has moved away from the other friends. 
cleaned herself up, put herself back on. It is, this is why I say it makes a difference. If you change, if you change, you'll start to affect other people. And the only way, I'm not going to change this through politics, I'm not going to change this through politics. The only way we're going to change this is one person at a time and being visible in your neighborhood and people go, you know what, I like Brian, he's a good guy and, and he does good things for people. And you being able to be a source of honor and uh, trust in your neighborhood will make a huge, huge difference. I am convinced that in the end, if enough people do um, the things that we talk about and connect with each other, I am convinced we will be remembered as the people that saved the republic. I'm convinced of it. Back in just a second.